Hi, this is Anne from Design Bundles, and today I'm going to show you how to make some shiny gold arrows and hearts in Adobe Illustrator. All right, let's get started. All right, I'm here in Adobe Illustrator, and I'm just going to create new. I'll come up here to print across the top, and then I'll choose letter. And then I'll come over here to the bottom right and create. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is draw some arrows. I'm going to go to Window Brushes, and then I'm going to click on the three little lines up here in the flyout and choose Open Brush Library. Then I'll get down here to Artistic and I'll choose Artistic Calligraphic. And this will bring up some different brushes that we can use. And I think I want this one right here, which is a 10 point round brush. So I'll click that and when I do, it goes over into my brushes panel. And I'll just close Artistic Calligraphic now. Okay, now first off, I'm going to hit B on my keyboard to get to my brush. And then I'm going to hit Return. And what that does is it brings up the brush options. And by the way, your brush is also over here on the toolbar. Now I like my brush to be smooth, but not too smooth. So I'm going to keep it right here on this one. Um, everything else is fine, so I'll say OK. Okay, and now I'll draw my first arrow. So I'm just going to click and drag. And as you can see, when I release, it smooths it out for me, which is really nice. And then I'll drag here and here. And I'll just finish that shape. Then I'll draw some little feathers here at the end. Now you may have noticed that it was going this way and I redrew that area and now it's going this way. So you might have to deselect. To do that, it's Shift Command A or Shift Control A on a PC. But I'm just going to copy this one with Control C and then I'll undo and it puts it back over there and then I'll command and paste in front. So that's Command F on a Mac, Control F on a PC. So now I've got both pieces. And I've switched to my selection tool so that I can just move that down a little bit. But now I'll get back on my B tool. So I'll hit B, which will take us to the brush tool again. And now I'm just going to complete those little feathers. I don't really like that one, so I'll undo and redo it. Okay, and this is looking pretty cute. Now if I zoom in with my Z tool, that'll get me to my zoom tool. I can see that these aren't perfect, so I'll hit A on my keyboard, which will bring me to the direct selection tool right up here. And I'll click on this one, and then I'll just grab that and pull it over. I'll click on this and just grab that end point and pull it over so it looks a little nicer. I'll use my hand tool or the space bar to pull the screen so I can get to my next part. I'll hit A on my keyboard. I'll click right on that dot and move it over and same over here so it lines up a little better. All right, and you can see it's kind of curved in like this. If we click on that point and then grab that handle, we can kind of move that a little differently. All right, this is looking pretty good. So I'm going to command minus or control minus on a PC. Okay, and our first arrow is done. Actually, let's draw a design in here. So I'll hit Z on my keyboard to get to my zoom tool. I'll just draw a box around the arrow. Now I'll get back on my brush tool by hitting B. And I'm just going to draw some lines in here. I don't know what these are. Maybe they're feathers also. Okay. And I'll have a center point here. Oh. I'm going to undo because it redrew that line. And now I'll deselect with Shift Command A, Shift Control A on a PC, and then I can continue drawing without it trying to redraw those lines. Okay, and this is looking pretty good, but I want to make this a sharp point. So I'll hit A on my keyboard. I'll bring this handle in and that handle in to make a sharper point. Okay, now I'll get back on my selection tool and I'm going to zoom out with Command minus or Control minus. Let's draw another little arrow. I'm going to zoom in here. 
use my hand tool to move it over. That's my space bar. And then hit B on my keyboard and use the brush to draw another cute little arrow. And this one will just have the little feather here. I'll pull these little handles in to make this a sharper point. Okay, and I'm going to zoom in on this point. I'm going to click it with my A tool, the direct selection, and then I'm going to change to my anchor point tool. This is also shift C on your keyboard. And I'm just going to click this once to make it a corner point. I'll hit A and then bring it out here a little bit. Okay, I'm going to command minus now. And this is looking pretty good. I might move this whole thing down a little bit. Okay. All right, we've got two arrows and now let's make a cute heart. So I'm going to zoom in on this area right here. I'm going to hit B on my keyboard and just draw a heart like this. Oops. Let me start over. I'm going to deselect so I don't redraw this with shift command A or shift control A and draw this other side right in here. Okay, that's looking quite nice. I'm going to deselect and then draw some lines up in here. And we'll have a line going down here. And then I'm going to draw some little dots. I like dots in my hearts. Okay, I don't want this to be quite so curvy. So I'm going to select it with my A tool. That's the direct selection tool. And then I'll just click and move these points over. This is all with the direct selection tool. And now it's a little rough. So I'm going to get on my smooth tool. I can get there with shift S. It's underneath your pencil tool. So it's right down here. And then I'll just drag over that and that looks really nice. You can also tell that it removed a lot of the points. Okay, and now I'm going to command minus to zoom out. Okay, now we have all of our arrows and hearts that I want. Maybe I'll add one more heart right here. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to select everything and then I'm going to expand it. And the reason we're doing this is because right now everything is a stroke. So if we hit Command Y or Control Y on a PC, you can see that these are a lot thinner. These lines are super thin. If you hit Command Y or Control Y again, you'll get back to your normal view. We want all these to be fills and we want them to be um, kind of combined. So I'm going to come up here to Object Expand Appearance. And now you can see that they're not thin anymore. If you hit Command Y or Control Y, uh, everything has been expanded out to its outermost uh, black area. Now we'll come down here to Pathfinder and we'll go to the Shape Mode Unite, which is that first one. So I'm going to click on that and that unites all of the black pieces together. So if we hit Command Y, Control Y one more time, you can see what's happened. I'll hit Command Y or Control Y to get back. All right, so we've got one fill for all of our objects and it's black. And now we want to make this shiny gold. So to do that, we need to get our gradients window up. So I'm going to go to window gradient and that'll open this gradient panel. Now I'm going to click this gradient. And as you can see, it's added a black to white gradient, but we want a gold gradient. So let's go to our swatches panel. And I'm going to click on the three lines for the fly out there. Now we'll go down to open swatch library and gradients. And here we have a lot of options and one of those is metals. So let's open that. We can see a lot of different cool looking gradients in here. Now I'm going to choose this first one. We'll just click on it. And when we do that, we've already got kind of a gold shiny look. And it also adds that swatch over here in our swatches panel. You can also play around with some of the other gradients. They look pretty cool in my opinion. But I think I'm going to stick with this first gradient. So we'll do that. And now I'm going to hit M on my keyboard to get to my rectangle tool. 
and I'm just going to draw a big rectangle over the top of these. Um, I'm going to make it black. By the way, if you aren't seeing some of your panels over here, you can go up to window and uh, find them here. Here's your color panel. And I'm going to use that to get a black fill. And now I'm going to send this to the back with shift command left bracket. That's shift control left bracket on a PC. And I'm going to go ahead and lock this with command two or control two on a PC. So now we aren't going to select it if we select these things. And that's nice. Now to make this even shinier looking, I'm going to modify this gradient. So I'm going to leave these colors here, but I'm going to move them closer together like this. Now this is in my gradient panel. Okay. And this is looking pretty good. Now I'm going to hold option and drag this dark node over here and drag this one over here. So you'll hold option or alt on a PC to get this to work. Now you can see it's kind of weird in these little dots here. And that's because Illustrator is not seeing these as all one shape. And we really need that to be all one shape. So with them still selected, go ahead and hit command eight or control eight on a PC. And that creates a compound path. So to get to it the kind of long way around, you can go to object, compound path, make, and you can see the keyboard shortcuts here too. And now our little dots are part of everything else, if that makes sense. Okay, let's grab a couple more of these. I'm holding option and just dragging these. And then I'm going to pull this gradient into my swatches. Now we'll click on our arrows and I'm going to just choose that new gradient. And because these are so close together like this, it gives it a more shiny look. And I like that. Okay. Now we can even add more shine by giving it little pops of shine with the lens flare tool. And that's underneath your rectangle. So come down here to the flare tool and I'm just going to click in a few different spots. Now it'll add like a crazy flare and that's not really something we want. I want like a 10 point diameter one, a little tiny one. I'm just going to add it to some of the points on these graphics and we'll say, okay. All right. Now let's zoom in to that area. You can see it's added this point, which is cool, but it's also added a bunch of other stuff. So I'm going to use my a tool. That is my direct selection tool and just come out here and draw a box around the things I don't want and then just delete and delete again. So you'll delete two times. You can also do this pretty easily with command Y or control Y. You can see exactly where that piece is uh, and highlight it with your direct selection tool and then just delete twice. I'm going to get rid of these little things too by clicking just on the edge of them with the a tool and we'll hit delete twice. So when we hit control Y or command Y, um, you can see we're left with just the little bright area. Now I'm going to copy this and paste and I'll move it to some of the other bright areas. You can also start dragging and then hold option to make another copy. And now let's make this one a little bit bigger. I think we need one right down here too. So that's how to get kind of a shiny gold effect on some of your graphics. Gradients are the way to go when you want to make something really metallic and shiny looking. All right. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, just hit the subscribe button and the little bell beside it, and you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. All right. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.